Welcome back to Let's Play Battlefield 1942. On today's episodes, we'll have the Liberation of Khan, which is the only map in this game that has the Canadians as the Allied force. So it'll be Canadians versus Germans. This was not included in the original release of Battlefield 1942. It was a free map that was added later on. And I'll just spawn his Axis here in the far back base because there are two tanks there and only one of them had been taken. And I'll just be bringing it up to the front. This is another map where one side has an uncapturable base, which the Canadians have at the far southern reaches of the map. And the Axis flags here are all capturable. So if the Canadians manage to take all the flags here, the Axis have nowhere left to spawn. There's four flags the Axis have north of the river, all near this city urban environment. And there's one flag just to the south of the river, which is the flag that the Canadians usually try to capture first. There's an allied Sherman. He got pretty unlucky there. And you can see in the distance there's a Canadian artillery piece. Mobile artillery just got blown up. The Axis usually have a pretty easy time defending that river flag, which has now gone neutral, because they have multiple vehicles that spawn there, as well as a lot of infantry that like to spawn there. In the chat they're questioning whether or not I'm a cheater. I'm playing this right after the round on Omaha Beach, which was an earlier episode, so that may uh, explain why they're thinking that right at the beginning of this round. The best way to use your tanks on this map is to keep them mobile. Most people will take a tank and they'll drive right up to an enemy control point and just try to run over the enemies. But most of the tanks' enemies from infantry are engineers and anti-tank who have a much easier time killing a tank if they're right up close against the tank. So it's a lot better for a tank to stay at a pretty good distance and to keep moving so that they can't sneak up on the tank. You only want to have a tank remain stationary if it's absolutely necessary to capture a control point. In fact, a lot of times what uh, a good strategy is is to just have your tank at a good distance from the flag that you want to capture and kill people as they spawn in, and then once those infantry get discouraged from spawning there, you can roll the tank up, or you can let uh, friendly infantry go in and capture the flag for you while you provide cover. As you can see there, the Canadians have already taken the river flag, which also creates for them a parachute spawn point on the other side of the river. That may explain why the Canadians don't seem to be guarding this, which is their only capturable flag right here. They may all be spawning in at that uh, other point across the river. I'm sitting on top of a repair pad, by the way, which uh, healed all my damage from earlier. And since I'm the only Axis anywhere around here, I've got to capture this flag by myself. So I'm in kind of an uncomfortable position here because I can be snuck up on, so you just keep rotating that turret around and just hope that you don't get snuck up upon in your ample blind spot. But nope. It was completely uncontested. No Canadians were defending this position. It may be that they were all still alive from their original spawn, so they weren't able to spawn in here and reinforce it. There, there's a Canadian mobile artillery again. He just apparently just sat there while I took the flag out from behind him. And yet another Canadian mobile artillery. I'm not sure why there's so many over here. In the distance, a uh, Canadian tank. Actually, it's an American tank with a Canadian symbol on it. 
Now, I'm pretty sure that he started out with more health than me. It's kind of... You always have to make a judgment call there whether or not you want to drive right past a tank. If they stay still, it's easier for you to hit them. And some of them are... Some of these tank drivers are really have trouble hitting a moving target. But if you drive right past them, they can hit you in the rear. And there's different damage... Uh, dealing to different areas of the tank. The rear is the most vulnerable position for the tank. And then the treads and sides, and then finally the front. But I basically just got lucky there when I drove right past him and he didn't hit me in the rear. Those little black spots in the road just up ahead are landmines. And if you drive extremely slowly over them, it's possible to drive past them without dying, but otherwise it's an instant death, no matter how much energy your tank has. Yeah, the tank just got hit by a stationary artillery piece over there, just to the right of the bridge. So I'm going to try to cross this river with the bridge in between me and that artillery piece, so there's no line of sight. swim you cannot use any weapons at all and if that Canadian guy sees me I'd be in trouble but now he got killed I got hit the wrong time to jump out of a window just bad timing on his part now I'm going to attempt to contest and capture this flag over here. This is their main flag, so when they've got multiple flags, usually they'll try to defend this one. Now I got killed by an explosive pack. Now you've seen, now I'm on the Canadian side. Now this happens if one team has too many people on it. There's an automatic team switch, unfortunately, which... Well, I guess it's not really unfortunate, it's just really annoying if you're the guy who gets team switched to make for balance. But this was, of all the times I could have been team switched, this was not a bad one. The Canadians have really gained the upper hand here and taken most, all but one of the flags now. Normally when you get team switched, the team with fewer people is doing worse, so you get stuck. But I don't know, somehow they managed to do better than the German side did with fewer people. Now this is not, a ser right now I don't think the server has an admin on it, so it's not an admin doing the team switching, it's just an automatic program. And sometimes that program gets triggered if there's even one or two more people on one team than the other. So that may explain it. I'm stuck, I can't go further because of that friendly landmine. I can't remember whether or not the server will uh, trigger friendly landmines. On some servers, you can run over the friendly mines. Alright, now that engineer who was repairing the tank decided to just take it. The Axis now has just the one flag left, and it happens to be the river flag. Unlike the Canadians, the Axis do not get to spawn in that parachute spawn on the other side of the river. Stay tuned for part two.